Hi there, welcome to the Fat Burning Man Show. I'm your host, Abel James, and today we're here with Dan of DansPlan.com. We have a super brainy conversation about quantified self and using technology to stimulate behavior. Dan's super cool, just updated free website, DansPlan.com, the importance of quality sleep, and the implications of the precipitous drop in our food spending in the past few decades. All right, let's go hang out with Dan. Hey, Dan, how are you? Abel, good. You're, how are you doing? Life is good. Gosh, you sound like you're in my house. <laughs> really? Yeah. Awesome. Creepy, yeah. but awesome. A little bit. A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so you must, as a someone with expertise in sound and music, you probably have a pretty good setup, I'm imagining. I have um, ninja musician skills <laughs> that I can oh. use to make it sound better than it should, yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, it's just turning you, a few knobs. Okay, you don't have the entire like room covered with soundproofing, sound-absorbing material? <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Okay. No, okay. not at all. <laughs> it's, the, it's all about the 80-20, Dan. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought we might start with something fun, Dan. Back in my college days, I led wilderness trips, and one of the things we used to do was get each other to do two-minute life stories. So uh, why don't you give us a rundown of who you are and how you became the man behind Dan's plan. Wow. Okay. So I'll really pull this one way back. Um, Cause you know, it is fun to think about how did, how did I end up doing what I'm doing? Right. You know, and I was, I grew up, I was athletic. I played basketball in my driveway until my neighbors screamed at me, you know, go to bed. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I always had an interest in sports and performance um, and then I grew up in a family where my mom loved cooking mm -hmm. and also read every single nu nutrition and diet book that was available. And, and, I, and I'm not too far off when I say every. I mean, our, right. she had all of them. And um, so I got into reading them as well, and we would talk about them. So I think that obviously led to an interest both in just science and then performance, wellness, diet, all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was, I think, the the kind of the foundation of it. Um, as I advanced in my academic career, I realized that I kind of edged towards the more kind of hardcore sciences as really being appealing to me just because they were so challenging. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean like chemistry and physics, but I, I do mean like, you know, neurobiology over like the practice of the practical application okay. um, of like sports performance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of funny because I almost, in a way, kind of come full circle because now I'm, <laughs> yeah. I've got, got this company that's trying to help people do the practice, not necessarily like have an endless discussion about like what's important and, and um, uh, you know, what are like the, the, me the mechanisms that are involved. I mean, I think that's super interesting and I'm mm -hmm. still involved in it, but yeah, uh, yeah so that's uh, a little bit more about background. I have a uh, master's in exercise science. Um, I studied um, energy homeostasis or how the brain determines the level of fat on the body. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a uh, Division One strength and conditioning coach at the University of San Francisco. Um, I did year-round training programs for all 13 different athletic teams to optimize in-season performance, mm -hmm. which is really cool because obviously okay. there's different needs. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I've done academic research in diet, nutrition, and sleep, uh, looking at how lifestyle affects uh, things like prostate cancer development. Um, and then now I'm doing a PhD in cognitive neuroscience. And I work with the Department of Neurology and Endocrinology at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the fun, the fun fact that I like to share is Albert Einstein studied there for 15 years. So I, oh, nice. Yeah. I want people to make that association as best, as best as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I also work with uh, at, um, uh, the Behavioral Science Department at Stanford. Um, and so it's a nice collaboration. And we're looking at how chronic sleep deficiency will influence the decision-making process around lifestyle choices. So how, when you are sleep deprived, do you kind of become a different sort of decider? Mm -hmm. Are you more likely to say yes to the candy bowl if you are, you know, not getting enough sleep? Yeah. yeah. Well, no wonder we get along so well. <laughs> right. Know, like all these things in your background are, are very closely parallel to, I think, a lot of mine. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been reading your book and it's uh, really well done. I encourage everybody who has not picked that up on Amazon to, to read it. I was very, I'm very impressed. I'm not, I'm about three fourths of the way through it now, but, uh, 
I know enough to know it's really good. <laughs> right I, I appreciate yeah. that. And yeah. I, I assume you're talking about the musical brain, which might surprise some of the people out there who don't really know it. But this is about the connections between uh, music and the brain and, and how the brain of the musician is fundamentally distinct from the non-musician. So this has nothing to do with my nutrition book, really. But <laughs> it does kind of show an expressed interest in evolutionary biology, which is the same approach to nutrition. So just a little bit for the people out there. But Dan, I wanted to talk about, obviously, the dance plan. And one of the coolest things about it is that it's free. So uh, are you just independently wealthy, crazy, <laughs> or are you just an awesome dude? <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> uh, you know, the, um, setting up a kind of how are you going to monetize a business, I think, is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd gone back and forth because this is, you know, the, the, the mission is to help people be healthy. Right. We can we can dive into that, but in order to do that, I need to create a stable business that has kind of a, you know that's able to attract the best thinkers, uh, people that are really passionate and dedicated to kind of have have this as a platform to make their contributions. So um, you know our our goal though is to try to create something that is accessible for everybody. So you don't you don't have to overcome a, a kind of a barrier in order to, to use the site. Mm -hmm. um, but then we're thinking about developing, you know, premium features that people would pay for that would support our development. Um, and then we also have a shop. So we, the, we look at different sort of products that we think can be used in some way to mm -hmm. kind of benefit different individuals. And that range from technology to workout products to even various food products. Um, and then we sell those as well. So that's um, you know, anybody can use it. You don't have to buy a thing from us. You don't have to upgrade, you know, the kind of premium services, but that's how we kind of plan to make money in the future. Yeah. It's, it's such a cool, slick site too. Like when oh. I'm on there, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> there aren't a whole lot out there that are like that these days. So yeah, props to that. How long has it been, been going in this way? Well, uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, it, let's see. So we launched, uh, we launched a version of the site in April of last year, but didn't mm -hmm. tell anybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it was just let's get it out there and run it for a few months and just see, you know make sure we have the bugs out, et cetera. Plus, it's you know I've been continuing to work on kind of the writing um, that is in support of the you know the method that we're using. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that if you're going to put out a product like this, it, you know people have the right to know like hey what it, how are you making your decisions? What is it based off of? Yeah. So I've written plan chapters, and um, and by the way, Dance Plan is not—it's not just me. There's actually four founders, um, and that includes Paul Jaminet, who wrote the Perfect Health Diet. Yeah. Uh, um, Guy Larry Carter, who's a um, was an assistant professor of behavioral economics, so he's studied behavior change um, in animals and humans, and really understands the inner workings about what uh, you know what makes people take action and how do you change action. So great contribution. And then um, a real good buddy of mine, Eric Svensson, who was in investment banking for about 10 years. Really? Um, yeah. And working in the food and beverage industry. Ah. And yeah, so he had a interest in, in that, but also didn't really kind of hated the direction that banking was going. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, that's a, you know, it's a nice group of people that are really committed. Um, but yeah, so when I, I don't want to take all the credit <laughs> at all. And, <laughs> but the one thing I don't really like about the name, I think it's memorable, yeah. but it also suggests that, you know, I fashion myself as a guru and that not all these ideas uh -oh. are mine. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was talking to, uh, to Paul Gemini, uh, when we were in Austin a few weeks ago and had a great time talking to him about a whole bunch of things. Uh, but I, how is he involved in, and how is, uh, his, why don't you tell the other folks who may not be familiar with his work or his book about how his approach and your approach to nutrition is unique. So, um, what I, Paul and I met at the Ancestral Health uh, Symposium last year in Los Angeles, and I ended up having maybe two, three hours of discussion with uh, him and his wife, Su Xing Jamine. Oh, wow. Yeah, and Su Xing is a cancer researcher at Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul was an astrophysicist at Harvard, MIT, in Berkeley, yeah. had failing health, uh, decided to dedicate his you know, serious scientific acumen to the investigation of nutrition, and he came up with a philosophy a model, which is, you know, that most disease is based off of kind of poor nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have poor nutrition, it lays the groundwork for the body to not be able to fight off infection as well. Um, and so it's kind of a combination of infection and also 
uh, poor nutrient status within the body that then leads to kind of more rapid degeneration and uh, you know the, the ability to get sick more easily to not fight you know to stay sick for longer mm -hmm. um, so he has a concept of a very high nutrition low toxicity diet and um, I just really I liked his approach very much um, yeah, and yeah yeah and um, you know I believe that diets are not necessarily answers, right? We're always looking, well, what is the answer? What's the best diet? Mm -hmm. They're models, right? You build a model and you construct it off of a premise um, and then you articulate um, and hopefully show support for what that premise is. Yeah. Um, he's got, you know, 500 references at the back of his book. Undoubtedly, there are elements of that, of his book that are going to be shown to be maybe perhaps inaccurate or he's going to be able to modify it. But what I loved about Paul is that he has this kind of open-mindedness and, and, you know, he, he knows why he believes something, mm -hmm. but he, he's not dogmatic or um, inflexible about, you know, sure. if you're to offer a suggestion about well, is, is this correct or not. And so it's that combination of thoroughness and then also, I think, um, you know, that flexibility that um, made me really attracted to kind of involving him in the process. Yeah, he seems like such a nice guy. And yeah. one of the things I really en enjoy about his blog is that he plays nicely with, with everyone who's out there. It, obviously, there's a big thing going on with uh, Safe Starches right now. And, yeah. you know, he's kind of on one end of that and other people are on others. And I, I know that he's there's a disturbing trend in the paleosphere of people being attacked for all sorts of things. And it's just ridiculous at this point. But uh, yeah. I think he responds to that in a really great way. And it, and his solution to all of that is kind of inclusion. You know, it's, it's not about what you can't eat. It's, it's about what you can eat and all the things that you tolerate well. And uh, so it shouldn't be, no one should be freaking out and taking all the rice off of their sushi. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, unfortunately I think that um, I'm not, personally interested in engaging in ego battles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like sometimes um, the battle between two individuals can actually be useful for a community because you have two different positions that are articulated and it fleshes sure. out some important content, mm -hmm. uh, concepts. You know, it puts pressure on the individuals to kind of sharpen, their, sharpen the skills a little bit. Um, so it can be good for debate reasons, but it also can morph quickly, I think, into... Um, something, you know, basically camps where you're in this camp or that camp. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you guys are the enemy, right? And right. it's, you know, who's, who's with us. And so I'm, um, I'm, I'm very interested in not, uh, kind of creating a, that sort of incentive system yeah. myself. So for example, I don't describe dance plan as being paleo. Right. Right. So, I mean, I'm not, we are committed to a mission. So my identification is to our mission of helping people be healthy. And I have, we have five aims. I can explain what, you know, those aims are. Yeah, go for um, it. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, the kind of the thesis that Dance Plan is based off of is that, you know, a broken lifestyle is at the root of modern illness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you have, and this has become ever apparent to me, we, we know that there are a lot of different things that contribute to health in some way. Right. And, um, if you are, let's say, a researcher in exercise physiology, there's a tendency to want to ex over-explain the contributions of, you know, exercise. Like it's, it, you, you know, exercise accounts for everything, good or bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, and I'm just pulling that out of, you know, out of the air. But um, that that is a human tendency to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You you if you if the world is a, you know, if uh, if you're a hammer, the world is a nail, right? You know. If only it were that simple. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so it, the lifestyle really matters, okay? So we view health not simply as a balance between wellness and sickness, mm -hmm. but also as a personal practice. So our environment um, no longer um, predicates uh, survive, you know, health based off of just simple survival behaviors, right? right, we don't, right. You know, we've systematically reduced the needs for sitting and staying up, you know, that we have technology and tools that keep us up late at night and um, ever increasing convenience of food products, which has, of course, major limitations. Um, and so I think it's really useful that people maintain an attitude that health, my health is a personal practice mm -hmm. that I engage in on a daily to weekly basis. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, uh, the goal of it is to basically help reduce the risk of disease, mm -hmm. maintain physical abilities, and then optimize life performance, quality of life, and lifespan. So, um, you know, the way that we do that is we've, okay, we've looked at or what are the most salient or important aspects of lifestyle that are, that are modifiable, that people can actually affect in their life. Sure. 
And so we focus around food, movement, and sleep. And what we want to do is help everybody live as an intelligent eater, an enduring mover, and a restorative sleeper. I like that. Oh, cool. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, so we, the idea is that um, we want to help.